Hello everybody and welcome back to Cutting Edge Action. Now in front of me you are going to see a variety of assorted knives and today we are going to go through each and every one of them and talk about different types of folding knife actions and locks and then of course we will go over the fixed blade lastly. Alright so let's go ahead and get right into it since we have so many different mechanisms and locks to cover and we are going to start with the push button automatic being represented by the Boker Kalashnikov Dessert Warrior. And as you can see, to fire a push button, all I have to do is push the button here and the knife pops open with a spring. And in order to get the knife open, all I have to do is push the button. I don't have to do anything else. And then to close the knife, I simply hold the button down and then push the blade closed. Now the con to this is of course I don't have any type of lock on this knife because it is a straight push button with no safety. And then also with push button automatics it can be moderately hard to retract the blade one handed because it requires you to push back against that spring to reload it for the next time you are ready to fire. Okay guys next up represented by the classic Victorinox Swiss Army Knife we have got the slip joint. And of course, the way that you open this, I'm sure you've all seen these before, is you simply insert your fingernail into the nail slot and then pull it open. Now the downside is that you are almost certainly not gonna be able to get these things open one-handed, and they can be prone to getting closed by forces opposing the cutting direction. And that is, of course, just something you have to deal with with a slip joint style knife. All right, our next mechanism here, represented by the Paragon Warlock, is the gravity assisted knife and if you've seen this knife on my channel before you know that all you have to do to open it is hold down the two black buttons without touching the blue of the aluminum case at all and then simply give it a swing of the wrist and the knife opens up with gravity assistance that's all there is to it of course this knife is nice because your fingers never have to be in line with the blade when it's closing or opening and it is very very easy to get this thing open and closed as you can see even when i'm holding it at kind of an awkward angle here like i am over the studio set okay guys our next mechanism is going to be the spidey hole in combination with a back lock and all i have to do to open the spidey hole is insert my thumb into it and then give it a nice flick flick my wrist a little bit or simply rotate my thumb around to push the blade all the way open now the downside to this one of course is that sometimes it can feel like you really don't have enough power with your thumb to get it flicked open i feel like that's more so a problem with the spidey hole than with a thumb stud design but a lot of people love the spidey hole and absolutely swear by it and say they don't want to use anything else so this is truly a very popular design and you might be wondering, why is it called a spidey hole? Well, it was really popularized by Spyderco, and they use the spidey hole design on a ton of their knives, so it is colloquially known as the spidey hole. Okay guys, next up, representing the bar lock category, we've got the Benchmade Bug Out. This is my custom model in two different shades of aluminum for the scales, and then M390 for the blade, and of course we've got the opposing red and blue hardware. Now the bar lock is pretty cool because it never requires you to have your fingers in front of the blade at all when you go to close it. All you do to close the blade is you simply pull back on the locking mechanism and then just close the blade. And you can also do it just with a little flick of the wrist or a little gravity assistance, although this is not considered a gravity knife. That's all there is to open and close the bar lock style design. Now as far as cons go, you do have very, very thin Omega springs in this design, which some people really do not seem to like at all. Me personally, I've never had an Omega spring fail, but that doesn't mean I won't have one fail on me in the future because it's basically just a couple of paper clips that keep the bar lock in position in these Benchmade knives. All right, next up, we're moving through them quick here. We have got the button lock being represented by the Civivi Elementum in carbon fiber and a Damascus blade. And to open and close a button lock, all you have to do is push the button and then give it a swing of the wrist and it flies open or closed. Now this one is nice and smooth because of course this knife is riding on bearings, which makes it very easy to get open and closed and it makes it incredibly fidgety. So this is a very, very fun knife to play with. The nice part about this knife is of course you never have to have your fingers 
in line with the blade, just like on that Benchmade design that we just saw with the bar lock. So that is always a bonus when it is a truly safe closing system. Okay, we're gonna skip right over that blue SOG for now because that's more of a combination piece. And we are gonna go straight for the flipper tab. Now what's a flipper tab? It's this little guy right here. All I have to do to open this knife is just push on the flipper tab and it flies right open. There is no kind of spring assistance going on here. It's just the energy of me pushing on the flipper tab that is opening up the blade. And then to close it, this is a liner lock design. So I do have to reach my fingers across the path of the blade to get this thing closed. All right, following up that Civivi bow in carbon fiber, we've got the Kershaw Misdirect, and this is representing our spring assisted category. Now the only difference here between this and the last knife is that there is a little bit of spring action going on once I depress the flipper tab to a certain point and you'll see it kick in here. As soon as I reach a certain point, the blade is going to fly out all on its own. And there it is right there. So you saw me hit the point where the lock could no longer hold the blade in place. So there you saw me hit the point where the detent could no longer hold the blade in place and it just flies out after it catches on that spring. Let's do it one more time. And there it goes. So that's all there is to opening and closing a spring assisted knife with a flipper tab. Same thing going on here where we do have to reach our fingers across the path of the blade to access the frame lock design. Okay, here's our third flipper variation, and this is going to be a front flipper represented by the Real Steel G5 Compact Metamorph here in carbon fiber and the M390 steel. And as you can see, all I have to do to flick this knife open is use my index and wrap it around the top of the flipper, like so, or I can put my thumb, just like this, and flick it open, nice and easy. Of course, with this design, just like the last two, I do have to cross my fingers over the path of the blade to access the liner lock and close the knife. Okay guys, so we are on to our final row of the folders here. And here is the Wii Banter, representing the thumb stud category. And as you can see, all I have to do is give this thumb stud a nice flick with my thumb, and the blade flies open every single time. Very nice little reliable mechanism on this knife. It is equipped with a liner lock, so I do have to reach my fingers across the blade to close it. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and skip over this SOG for now and move straight on to the out the front knife, which is being represented by the Boker Kalashnikov OTF. As you can see, this OTF is a little bit larger than the regular push button Kalashnikov. Not all that much bigger, but a decent amount. And to open and out the front knife, all I have to do is push the slider forward and pull it back to retract it. Now this has the benefit of, of course, being a very safe action in that my fingers never have to go in front of the blade at all. And also there's a safety system in place here that makes it so that this blade cannot stab any more than just a couple millimeters into anything you put in front of it if you were to try and fire it like that. And I'll show you that right now with a note card. So if I just hold this note card in front of the knife like so, and then try to fire it, you'll see the knife push the note card forward a little bit and I did have a tiny amount of penetration, but the knife did not actually finish deploying. So as you can see, it is now off track. And then to reset it, since the button is in the forward position, I just pull the knife all the way back out like so, and then it is ready to go again. Just like that, nice and easy. I'm really a fan of the OTF action. One of the downsides to this, of course, is that the blade size is typically going to be significantly smaller than the size of the case, just like we see here. Okay, last but not least, for the traditional folding designs, we have got the Balasong or butterfly knife. And I can't really do a lot of tricks here on the camera for you, but I'm sure I'll have some on the B-roll so you guys will be able to get a good look at some of my butterfly tricks and see just exactly how this thing works. Basically, we've got the blade, which is attached to two handles that are on pivots, and they fold around the blade just like that. The side that has the latch on it is called the bite side and the side that does not have the latch is called the safe side because if you are holding the knife 
by the bite side and spinning it around, your fingers can get bit by the blade. A lot of people choose to remove the latch from their butterfly knives and that makes it a lot easier to work one-handed. Me personally, I opted to leave it on on mine. All right, let's go ahead and revisit the SOGs real quick because they're kind of a combination of a few different elements. This blue SOG here is the Flash ATXR, and as you can see, it has a safety latch on the back. So red is the fire position and black is the safe position. If I put this in fire like that and then simply push on the thumb stud, at a certain point, I'm going to reach a spring assisted point where the knife is going to fly open. Now as you can see, this action basically looks automatic, but it's actually not. It is just still spring assisted, it is not automatic. Now to close the knife, I simply pull back the bar lock and then push the blade closed. And if I go ahead and engage the locking mechanism on the back, as you can see, I will no longer be able to deploy the knife with the thumb stud. Okay, so for the last folder, we have got the SOG Terminus XR LTE in carbon fiber with the gold coat. And this is kind of an amalgamation of several different things. We have got a bar lock style design popularized by Benchmade. We've got thumb studs. And then we have also got a nice flipper tab on the back of the knife. So you have three different ways that you can choose to open this knife. Very cool. Okay, so last but not least, we've got the fixed blade being represented by my United States Space Force K-Bar in the blue handle and the gray coated blade. And of course, there is no action to show off here because this knife simply sits exactly how it is fixed in place and that's why it's called a fixed blade. Typically, this would be accompanied by either a Kydex plastic sheath or by some type of nylon or leather sheath. Okay, everybody, so we are getting down to the end of the video here, and I just want to briefly go over things that are specifically locks and not related to opening mechanisms. So we'll go ahead and start back again on the Spyderco Pacific Salt, and this is going to be representing the back lock category. As you can see, there is a, an indentation here on the back of the knife. And if I open the knife first, you can see if I try to close it, nothing is going to happen. And all I have to do to close up the back lock design is simply press on the back of the knife and then fold the blade closed. This can be done one handed if the knife has a little safety area at the back of the blade. Basically, you want to position your index finger as far up on the knife as you can and then simply hold down on the back lock and the knife will swing closed, allowing you to close it with just one hand. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move it along to the liner lock being represented by the O-Knife Beagle. I'll go ahead and open this thing up. And then as you can see in the liner of the knife, there is a small sprung section of the liner that moves over to the right under the bottom of the blade and keeps it in place. And then to close it, all you have to do is push that section of the liner back all the way to the left and then fold the blade with your index finger. There is a small, steel ball on the liner which is called the detent or detent that keeps the blade partially open and then once you push hard enough you'll see the blade just swings closed as it clears the detent okay next up is going to be the frame lock design being represented by the zt 0460 ti and when i fire this knife you can see Part of the frame has now moved over to the right, so it is under the blade. And the same thing is happening here where we have a detent ball that is going to stop the knife from closing if I don't push the lock far enough to the left. So I'll push it as far left as I can, and then I'll be able to close the knife very easily and comfortably with just one hand. All right, for our penultimate knife of the day, we've got the Benchmade Casba representing the switch lock design and the knife is currently in the closed position with the lock forward. So as you can see, if I go to hit the fire button on this automatic knife, nothing is gonna happen and the blade is not gonna come out. But if I pull that switch back into the fire position and then give it a hit of the silver button, you can see it flies right open. And then you can do the same thing in the open position. If I push the switch forward, you can see 
when I go to hit the button, I am unable to close the knife. If I pull the switch back into the fire position again, I can hold the button down and then swing the knife closed. All right, last but not least, we are back at the Kershaw Lucha just to show you guys how a latch bar works. Basically, it is pinned to one side of the knife, the bite side, and then you simply swing it around and then apply a little bit of force to bring the two sides of the handles together. And now the knife is in the locked position and it's not going anywhere as you can see. Now as these latch bars wear out and the knife becomes worn over time, they start to fail. I would say that this locking system is probably about the least reliable you can get. And that's just a factor of wear and tear really making latch bars less secure over time. And you can of course tighten up your pivots and do stuff like that to correct it over time. But latch bars are basically going to be in a constant state of maintenance if you want the knife to feel tight and secure. Whether your butterfly knife is some $20 Chinese thing or a several hundred dollar Benchmade butterfly. All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up this video. Really hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments and also what you would like to see me do next. Until next time, this has been Cutting Edge Action.